Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Again, Jesus went out from the region of Tyre and came through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee, within the region of Decapolis. They brought to him one who was deaf and spoke with difficulty. And they implored him to lay his hand on him. Jesus took him aside from the crowd by himself and put his fingers into his ears. And after spitting, he touched his tongue with the saliva. And looking up to heaven with a deep sigh, he said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And his ears were opened, and the impediment of his tongue was removed. And he began speaking plainly. And Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone, but the more he ordered them, the more widely they continued to proclaim it. They were utterly astonished, saying, He has done all things well. He makes even the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. to be healers 
That's the revelation of today. Now, Jesus was with his disciples in Tyre of, and Zidon, which is along the Mediterranean coast in the north, northern part of Israel. And then they made the journey down to the Sea of Galilee, got into a boat, and crossed to the other side, and went to a place where people were settled called the Ten Cities. And so when Jesus was there, multitudes of people came out to see him. Can you imagine that? The reason they came is because word had spread that Jesus could heal you. And so people would come from miles around to see Jesus and to be healed of their diseases and to hear his voice. They brought to Jesus on this occasion a man who was deaf, he couldn't hear, and mute. And they brought him to Jesus and they said to Jesus, will you heal him? Jesus does something unusual, which is not typical in his pattern. He took the man by the hand and took him aside from the crowd. And in the privacy of Jesus and this man, in their solitude, Jesus looks up to heaven and he takes his fingers and inserts them into the ears of the deaf man. And then Jesus speaks. And the word he uses uh, is not recorded in the word that was being written in Greek, rather uh, the writer actually quotes Jesus as he speaks his native tongue, Aramaic, and he says to the deaf man, Ephathua, which means be opened. And so the man who could never hear, hears for the first time the voice of the Son of God commanding him to be opened. And then Jesus touches his mouth, and the man who was mute could speak and singing the praises of God, a tremendous miracle, and it impressed all the crowds. Jesus is still in the business of speaking to deaf people. He speaks to us, and he says, open your ears that you might hear, open your eyes that you might see, open your mouths that you may give witness to the glory of God as manifest in the person of Jesus, who is the Word made flesh, and who dwells among us. So my brothers and sisters, the call of the gospel today, oh, I gotta tell you something else. <laughs> um, in the years that I've been in pastoral ministry, um, people would often tell me that I speak too long, <laughs> that my homilies were just too long. In fact, Paul Shoemaker, who's sitting on the front row here, looks at his watch to time my homilies. And then when they're done, the mass is over, he'll come up to shake my hand. And you thought he was just giving uh, polite reverence to the bishop or something like that. No, he was telling me, Bishop, your homily was too long this morning. It was 25 minutes. Now I get a different complaint. They say my homilies are too short. <laughs> because I've come to the conclusion of what I needed to say to you this morning. But I hope you get the message that we are to listen to the Son of God, who is the true Word of God for us. And as we worship Him, we hear His voice. Even though we're deaf, we hear Him. Even though we're blind, we see Him. We see the Son of God, and He's our healer and our Savior. I know this to be true in my own experience. There's a couple who come to our church, and they've been coming quite often recently, but they're not here today. Uh, they sit right there in the second row. His name is Dick or Richard, and her name is Pat, that's his wife. And they would come every Sunday. I blessed their marriage 12 years ago. And so they were coming to church. Well, let us pray for the healing of Dick, because Richard, Cherry uh, had a stroke. I know what that's like. And they're very concerned about him. So let's remember Richard this morning as we offer the attention of this liturgy, of this Mass today together. I'm so happy to look out there and see you all on a Labor Day weekend, no less. I thought nobody would be here. I see Father Chinapa, and he brought Shiny and Asha. Is that you? I'm glad you're, that Chinapa brought you to church today. It's good to see you. Well, everyone, that concludes my, oh. Oh, Mother Esther Diane is back. Can you imagine that?
he almost died in the hospital. But Jesus had more to, for her to do. And so she was raised up. And so this, again, is an example that Jesus is our healer. Thank you for letting me use you as an example, Mother Esther Diane. <laughs> and that, I think, my brothers and sisters, is the gospel of the Lord. Amen. 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 Jesus, you are the healing. You can.